Hey guys, if you're looking down and your heart's feeling empty, come have a laugh with me. I'm Shadow Soul 720 Um, so, today we're going to be talking about Outriders, it's a new game that's uh, just been released, uh, what was it, like, April, May, 2021? Um, it, it looks like Destiny sort of style gameplay, I'm pretty sure it's backed by Square Enix. There's a few different classes, um, and it's co-op. Uh, four classes at the moment. Ignore the classified bit. Uh, there's a demo as well that you can get on Steam if the game's not already out. So, what we're going to be talking about in this video is some... some of the best routes you could go as far, the, as, far as the classes go because it has a skill tree. So, if you go to this website, uh, Paradox ZYX uh, .github.io if that's still up um, you should be able to check out this skill tree whether or not it's been updated for the current version game I don't know but it's been doing really well for me so far so you'll see we've got different classes at the top here different skill trees there's normally three on the side here so this one for example Pyro has Ashbreaker, Firestorm, Tempest the four classes just to break it down for anyone that's too new is there's Trickster which focuses on uh, warping through time, being a little bit like a rogue, uh, getting in there doing hits, not tanking too much, uh, and not being too supportive in some aspects, but has some of the highest DPS of the uh, classes. The Pyromancer uses fire, as you'd imagine. Um, actually, if we go down here, you can see some of the skills, because every class has some of those. The grayed out ones just aren't uh, in the game at this current moment. And you, as far as I can see so far, you can only select three. And they'll have little subcategories like explosive, ignite, and mobilize. Um, for this demonstration, I'm just going to be going through Technomancer and Trickster because that's the two that I've been wanting to focus on quite a lot. Uh, Pyromancer is the only dedicated, uh, like, healer, I guess, of the game so far. Um, also, if you couldn't see it, there's 20 class points that you're able to spend in, on at the moment. I think there's going to be more skills added later, potentially more classes. Um, but it is co-op. As far as I know, you can have up to three people, maybe more. I haven't done a lot of research into it yet. And... The best pathways... No, no, I will talk about the other races. Uh, classes. So, Devastator, big tank, uh, heals itself in close range when you get kills. Um, can also put up a big wall, stop bullets coming from the team for like a few moments, so... Uh, if you want something that's going to be very easy to get through the game, you're going to have a pretty good time with, I'd recommend Devastator. Um, because it is fairly fun, it can just jump around. And I feel like most people will have a good time, no matter what skill tree you go down, I think generally you're doing pretty well. Um, something else to note with these skill trees is you can build them along. Um, but then at a certain point, you're actually able to go down into different skill trees, as you can see there. So that's something you could consider as well, if you wanted to. Um, and that's something that I've done with the other ones. And Technomancer is the final one. As you can see, here's a build that I had tried to work on. And Technomancer is a little frail. It's normally further back in the group. It's more of the sniper-ish sort of class. Um, actually, sorry, I, I had it completely wrong before. Pyromancer is more of a support uh, archetype and Technomancer is more of the heal. I know you guys are probably screaming at me for that. But that's how it is, because the Technomancer has a specific thing called Fixing Wave, which heals turrets and allies. So, this character also has turrets. So, the way that I built this is, you can see I've gone into the uh, Pestilence archetype, which the top archetype here is normally more focused on uh, weapon damage. Uh, the middle one's more, normally more focused on healing and tank. And then the bottom one's more focused on Anomaly, which I assume is sort of like uh, your skill 
damage. I'm not entirely sure yet. Not entirely sure. It, it might just be that. But with my knowledge, what I've done here is I've decided to go upwards because you have a lot of things like weapon damage. Uh, we've got weapon leech just because we want to heal and heal ourselves and do damage at the same time. Armor piercing to get through some more things. We went for Sniper Master because you get 40% weapon damage on your sniper. Uh, and you have a high percent of getting snipers dropped. If you don't want to play a sniper with this class, that's okay. 40% still is a huge buff though if you want a sniper as your secondary weapon. Um, yeah. And then we went for Nitrogen Capsules, so it decreases the distance considered to be long range by 3 meters. So each class already has some starting buffs. This one gets a 15% uh, buff if it is shooting from long range. As well as it has some skill leech and weapon leech automatically, which I believe you do damage, you heal, you use skills, you heal. So if we reduce the range that we're at with other enemies and things, then it's more likely that we're going to get that 15% weapon damage increase. So it's very good for snipers. If you're playing this character as a short distance character, um, it's, that, that's fine, but you might want to consider something long range a little bit. If you want to use that first buff. If not, that's fine too, and you, you don't have to. Uh, but I, yeah, that, that's the only reason I'd skip Sniper Master, unless you just want to save to get towards the end of the route over here. Because you've only got a limited amount of points, which is 20 at this point. So, after Sniper Master, because that big 40% increase, we go Armor Piercing as well. Well, we had that already just because that's what you have to do to get through here. Uh, I already said about the range. I don't care about the Toxic Duration. The way I'm setting mine up is we've got two gadget skills, one turret for focusing on cryo, one healing thing because I feel like that's super essential and great. And then we have Scrapnel, but really that's just to interrupt enemies and there's a short uh, cooldown cost. You could use Pain Launcher, you could use Tool of Destru uh, Destruction, destruction. Um, or you could even just go for your third gadget um, and just get skills that focus on uh, gadget cooldown and things like that. So, at this point we've gone to weapon damage because we need it. Uh, and then, what I did later was I came back to this one, because it reduces uh, what's considered long range by more, by another 3 feet, 3 meters, sorry. So together we've reduced what long range is, by the game standard by 6 meters, which means it's more likely we're going to get that 15% increase on damage all the time. Um, which is great. Now of course you don't need to do that, and if you'd rather uh, build up toxic, and do toxic things, and change some of the skills at the bottom, you're more than welcome to. I believe there's two toxic skills. Um, yeah, these two. And there's also two cryo-freeze skills, so. If you're going cryo-freeze, I wouldn't get the toxic. If you're doing toxic and or long range, feel free to choose whichever one you like. Um, so then we went down here, because our health regen threshold is increased by 20% of our maximum health, which means we're getting more health back. That's just great. Um, something I did do is I checked out these last ones over here, it is worth pointing out that you can increase your magazine size by 50% and that when you use decay skills you can increase your weapon damage for you and your allies for 40% ten, uh, for 10 seconds. Now what's important to uh, look at here is it says decay skill which means you want to go down to your skills and realize okay these two are in the decay bracket so it's only when you're using these skills here that you will be increasing your weapon damage for you and your allies for ten uh, by 40% for 10 seconds. Now another reason I didn't go this route is because this one down here, overclocked, says if you use a gadget skill, which I'm always going to have fixing wave here regardless of what I was going to build. Um, and that's a gadget skill. Cryo turret's also um, a gadget skill. 
it increases our weapon damage and anomaly power by 40% for 10 seconds. Now, if you guys noticed anything interesting there, it's that uh, both of them increase weapon damage, our own weapon damage by 40% for 10 seconds. This one, however, only affects our, cell, our own weapon damage, but it also increases our anomaly power. Uh, this one up top increases our allies' uh, damage as well. So that is something to note. If you'd rather be more team support oriented and boost your teammates, go for this one. I went for this one because I'm happy to get the damages, damage increases myself. But also it has like a Phoenix Revive sort of effect where if you lose all your health, you can receive a second chance to return to the battlefield with 50% maximum health for 10 seconds. Now I don't know what the 10 seconds part is about. <laughs> um, but it has a 180 second cooldown. Um, maybe it means you only get 50% of your health for 10 seconds, then you go back down and you lose that 50%? I'm not sure. You guys will have to explain and talk to me about it. Okay, with that out of the way, we go down, we get health because it's mandatory. Now, out of these two, you get skill, you can get skill leech, 6%, or you can get 15% skill cooldown for gadget. Um, I always, I'm going to recommend gadget because we're doing the healing sort of pathway, because I want to heal and do uh, maximum damage. It's just, it's a player style that suits me well. Um, so I'd always choose gadget over skill leech, but by the time we went all the way to the end, we still had some skill points left over, and I thought, well, skill leech, that's good, that's more healing for me, I'm happy with that. Because if I'm surviving longer, and I'm like the healer as such, then hopefully, uh, the longer I survive, the longer the team's going to survive, the f longer I'll have to get our cooldowns back down to zero so we can use them again. Um, increasing your turret's health by 100% is very good and tempting. I can definitely recommend that. I mean, we could just chuck that on now, even with our current build. I, you noticed, you might have noticed I saved a point there, just in case we want to use that later on something. Um, there's also negative 30% turrets health decay, which means over time your uh, your turrets have a, a certain amount of health. Let's just say it's 100, um, and over time that'll go down. It'll also go down if enemies attack it. So that only stops the decay, not if enemies shoot at it. But, what I recommend is not getting Engineer, because you may as well get Senior Engineer, right? If you have to choose one over the other. If you want to get both, that's going to be helpful, but Senior Engineer is always better, because you're just straight up doubling your turret's health. And, 100% is much better than 30% Decay. Because that's a, only, you know, one form. It's just Decay, not Damage Reduced. Where this is Damage Reduced and Decay, it's just 100% more health. Um, but both of them together is, is pretty good, if you're doing that. Um, but I don't like to rely on turrets too much in battle, because I'd rather rely on my own basic natural skills. Um, next we went for armor. Um, there's also 20% freeze duration. This one's really up to you. I just figured 20% armor you're probably going to use a lot more often, because you're always going to be getting shot at. Where 20% freeze duration could be useful to freeze them in place, so your party could, say, run away, or... So you could do more damage to them, or something like that. Um, but whenever it's on cooldown, well, what are you going to do? You know? So that's why I went for armor, just because I thought it was more generally generally useful. But hey, if you're never getting hit, maybe the freeze trash is better. Uh, um, then we got weapon leech, mandatory, mandatory 20% armor, which I'm not going to complain. Um, then we've got medical units, so whenever you use a gadget skill, it increases all healing received for you and your allies by 30% for 7 seconds, which is really cool. Um, I'm not sure if that's all healing that you do for your allies. I think it's just in general, like if they have their own natural healing abilities, they'll get an extra 30%. And I don't know if that applies to certain abilities where it's just a straight 10% for being around enemies that died. I have no idea. It might only affect some things, not everything. Um, but the other interesting thing is it says by using a gadget skill, which you guys are already know, we have two, of our, two out of our three gadget skills selected. So that's a higher chance for us to be able to use them. And Fixing Wave is already a healing skill, so we're healing an additional 30% I assume, for 7 seconds. 
on top of whatever fixing wave is already healing when we activate it. So that's why that's there, because I feel like that's extremely powerful. Um, and then, you know, the next one, Doctor of Medicine. Increase all healing done by you and your allies by 20%. So if you just want to straight up heal uh, more, <laughs> why not? It's, that's always there. It's a passive. It's just... Everyone. Everyone always gets to heal more when you're around. And that's a lovely feeling, I bet. Now, if you go this first line, you're getting more damage um, around. And that's fine if you want to do the damage thing and just have like the healing as a little passive. Or maybe you don't even want to play a healer. Maybe you're just playing it because you think it's cool and you want to put some turrets down things. And that's fine too. In which case, if you want to go full damage, I recommend the top one. Um... You can always go the bottom one as well. This one is a lot about toxic and decay, which is why we're not really here. But you can see why if you're doing toxic, it's it's going to be the opposite to where we've led. It's going to be down here. Um, and you could always go like halfway through this route and then get a toxic or go starting toxic-ish and then going up. You, you can play it however you like. Um, with a lot of these builds on a lot of these classes actually, um, like say even Pyromancer for example, I, I don't normally recommend just going the middle because a lot of it is healing, but then if you're always healing and you, you're very tanky then where's your damage coming from in a shooter game, you know, like you've got to be shooting things and doing damage in order to progress and if you're always healing and they're always doing damage then it's like, at, at, a, at a certain point I feel like it's a, a standstill, but that's maybe just my opinion. So I normally would, like especially with Pyromancer, I'd go into some of these more offensive uh, starting trees at the start here, or at, on Tempest, Tempest Ashbreaker, either one, and then roll into uh, Firestorm if you're going to go Firestorm. But I think actually for Pyromancer, I know I wasn't going to talk about these too much, but I think Tempest is one of the better ones. The end of Firestorm I like as well. Um, this one I don't care too much about yet, but maybe you guys can prove me wrong. But, like, take... Specifically, abilities of battle elites, I don't care about too much. Like, because they're situational. Ah, but there's also one down here somewhere too, yeah. Um, so, back to the Technomancer. Uh, then we have Skill Leech. Um, I could have chose 30% damage against frozen enemies. That's something you guys could choose if you want, but I just figured... Skill Leech, always active, I'm always getting a little bit more health. Freeze, well, I don't know if that 30% damage is just for me, I'm assuming it would be. And I feel like I've got enough damage coming in anyway. Let's have a look at some stats down here. 15% uh, armor piercing, yeah, it's, we've got 16% weapon damage, so the way this works over here, the key, is if it's like an orangey sort of color, then apparently it's like it's boosted. It's fair, I think it's as, like, as far boosted as you can go, considering the whole skill tree at the moment. That's not to say that it won't change in the future, but our sniper damage is very, very high. Our weapon damage is also very, very high. So, considering what this class is, I feel like we're getting a lot of damage output, and we don't need the extra frozen 30% damage. You guys, that's, that's a pretty big toss-up, so it's whatever you want to do. Um, but I just like the skill leech idea. Um, and our skill leech is 27%, so it's really hard to do because we chose that route. And of course, if you if you have one skill leech, well, you're doing something. You're healing something back. But if you've got a few stacked, then you'll notice more of a considerable uh, difference, I'd say. And then over here, overclocked. I, I, do, I already talked about this. I think it's just a better ver version of empowering antenna. Yeah. I mean, this one, it does help everyone, but this one... Is you get a second wind if you want, which means you can heal the whole team even more. So, again, if you want to go turret boosted and you don't really want to worry about healing your team, the top is probably pretty okay. It's probably pretty good. Uh, just be careful of dying. But I guess you can heal yourself, so... That's a pretty good perk. If you guys have ever played a game like Overwatch, uh, you can always compare it to something like Soldier 76... Um, or Torb and Torb John and you'll be fine. If, if you guys don't play Overwatch and you don't like that I'm comparing games, that's okay. I'm going to stop now as well um, until I talk about the next character briefly. So, um, I talked about Devastator just a little bit. Like I said, you can kind of go any pathway. You'll be fine. 
Uh, feel free to mix and match a little bit. It's pretty fun, pretty easy. You don't have to be too worried. Technomancer, I think this is the best path if you want to do damage and heal. Um, there are some little extra things that you could do. Um, oh, you can get this. So with that extra one point we have, you can go over, say, more weapon damage. Or you could get rid of, like, uh, one of these skill leeches or something like that. And then you can go 20% weapon damage assault, right? Or just more weapon damage for snipers, so... Any extra points you have from this route that you don't want, say you didn't want a sniper master, you could always invest it later and go to assault. It's something else I will say. Also, this is really good. Uh, Wipeout. That's, that's why I have this one point. I couldn't decide what I was going to put it towards. Uh, you could get 20% more armor. But increasing damage by 20% against enemies below 30% health will help you kill enemies pretty fast. I feel like by the time they're at that point, Unless it's a lot of really big bosses and this game's really difficult, which I don't know too much about yet, I don't think this is going to be too necessary. But it is an option that you guys have if you want. Alright, so, that wraps it up for Technomancer at the moment. Um, Demolish is the thing that I'm least about, but you guys can do that if you want. Alright. Don't mind me as I just change the track. Okay, so now we're going to Trickster. Trickster! If you guys have played Overwatch, it's kind of like Tracer a little bit, it's kind of like Reaper, it's kind of like Sombra. Um, it's a very flank orientated character. Um, any game with like a back attack, it's like that. Uh, Xenoblade, I don't know. Um, very flank heavy. So, skills, right? Uh, temporal Blade, a lot of these abilities slowed things down. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that I'm a big fan of movement, so I opted for movement, and that's how I kind of ran this a little bit. You guys don't have to do that. Um, borrowed Time is a bit of a head game where you mark a location, and then um, what, for the next few moments you can return back to it. And when you mark your location, you also get some shielding. So it's good to kind of like loop back time and go back. I don't think that heals you however, but just letting you know, it's 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 a good movement tool, so I enjoy it. But it's not for everybody. Um, Hunt and Prey, I like how short the cooldown is. I think normally it's like 11 seconds. Um, this is just 7.7 7 .7 because we've reduced it. So you select an enemy, you teleport behind them, you get a shield bonus, and then that's kind of it. So something else this character does really well is getting close. Um, so it's got 5% health, 5% damage mitigation while shield is active, which is important because every close range kill heals you for 20% of your maximum health and grants you 12% shield. So every time you're killing an enemy close range, you're getting some sort of small benefit from it. Which is why this class is really good with, say, shotguns. Um, it's not bad with assault rifles. Um, I recommend shotguns just because doing big damage at close range is fun. You could probably... I'm really interested to see someone do this with, like, a close range sniper rifle. I think that would be really funny and really entertaining because... There's, a, there's definitely a way. Because a lot of these boosts either say something like shotgun damage goes up or they'll say, uh, like, close range damage right? Or just general damage, but a lot of them is close range or shotgun. So you, you could always ignore the shotgun parts and then just go close range, da close range damage and grab a sniper and I'm kinda keen, <laughs> now that I'm talking about it, it sounds really interesting and I might I might see if I can do something with it. No guarantees though. Alright. So, uh, that's why this character is good at close range. And it's got a lot of movement where a lot of the other characters don't really the Devastator, the big tank, does have a bit of movement and can move around, so that is also good to note, but the other two don't have so much. Um, just standard running, I guess. So, that's why the movement are good, right? So you can teleport behind enemies, do big damage, heal yourself, great. Borrow time, you can mark a spot, go up to an enemy, do some big damage, uh, and then go back. 
and when you mark that spot before you like uh, fight an enemy, you have that shield. It also could potentially work if you want, like if there was one enemy or something, and you marked a spot, you run away from them, and then because you get those shields, they maybe shoot at you if you don't die. Then you warp back, and suddenly you're behind them, and then you shoot. Like I think that's also a very good strategy. It requires a bit of uh, like mind games, which I love. Um, but the strategy is not for everybody. It's for those who really want to do something a little technical, I guess. But you definitely don't have to play that this character like that. You don't. You can just avoid movement altogether if you want. Now, something else I will say is that there's this thing called uh, twisted rounds. So you fill your, mag your weapons magazine with bullets that increase your firepower by fifty percent, and it lasts until you reload or switch weapons. I don't like this. I think it's actually I, I do I, I like it. I think it's pretty good, but at the same time. Um, if Venator's knife stays as it is and gets sent to the game, I don't know what the, uh, what the cooldown's gonna be. I'm assuming bigger than Twisted Rounds. This one, uh, you throw a knife at the enemy, the blade ricochets between a, mac uh, a few enemies within a small radius, uh, dealing damage and marking them. So that already sounds really cool to me. It's like some big scatter blade thing. Um, or like a boomerang from Final Fantasy or something crazy. So you all mark targets that have been hit by the knife. Uh, get inflict inflicted by slow, so they slow down. So a lot of these are about slowing opponents, like this one. Uh, you do damage, you slow them, and you interrupt them. And the slow trap, which also slows things down in projectiles for 10 seconds. I think slow trap is pretty cool, I think it's interesting. But if Venator's knife is the same, then you're already attacking enemies, a few of them, and you're slowing them down, right? But the other thing is that marked targets, uh, the, the first, for the first few uh, seconds, however many, the first damage that you deal to them is doubled. So you mark your targets, they get slowed down, they take some damage, uh, I believe, yeah, they do. Um, and then whatever damage you do to the next is doubled. But remember, it's only the first damage dealt by you that's doubled. So, the Twisted Rounds is really good if you want to go like Assault Rifle or something like that, where you're just like, you know, putting a whole bunch of bullets into them and you've got a huge mag. Uh, Venator's Knife is better if you're using a shotgun, because it's the first damage. So with a shotgun, you'd assumedly pretty close, you shoot them once, it's a huge amount of damage. And that big burst is going to be doubled. Where if you have like an assault rifle and you shoot at them, the first bit of damage is doubled and that's, I'm assuming only a bullet or a few bullets, compared to like a huge burst of damage that gets doubled. So if you're going shotgun route, I definitely recommend this knife because it's better than twisted rounds. It, it matches slow trap a little bit. Um, and some of the others. Although it doesn't interrupt like Cyclone Slice or Temporal Blade. But, that depends on if you want interrupts. I feel like another, uh, I think every class seems to have an interrupt, so it's up to you if you want it. I'd rather just use like Borrowed Time or something and get out of there if I need to do. Plus they're gonna be slow, so if, if they're slowed down, it's, do you really need to interrupt them? Oh, so here's the tree. Let's talk about it. I absolutely love it. Uh, Reaver, anomaly power. But for each enemy in close range, your anom anom anomaly power is increased by 10%. In comparison, Assassin, for each enemy in close range, your weapon damage is increased by 8%. This is a higher number, right? 10%. I still prefer weapon damage over anomaly power. And that's just how I go. If you guys want to go anomaly, that's fine, but... <laughs> it's interesting, and I don't know how it really works with this character unless you just want to use skills all the time, but... As you guys already know, a lot of my skills are movement. So I'm not going to need anomaly power because I'm not doing damage with them. If I had a lot of the damaging sort of ones, or deception ones, then I'd probably consider anomaly a bit more. But for someone that wants to be just quick and nimble and kind of get in there, that's what I'm doing. So... The middle one, Harbinger, is 
it, it, it kind of makes this class tanky, which is interesting, and it gives it some more healing, uh, let's see, some shields, uh, armor gets increased, ammo pickups heal you for 5%, um, there's also, what was it, something interesting, um, I don't know, I think there was something that turns your shields into damage, or health into damage, or something. I don't... It doesn't matter, it's gone. Maybe it's another class. So it makes you tankier. So it... If you guys are worried about this class being too squishy, and taking too many hits, and dying a lot, I do recommend, you know, it's, it's not too bad to actually take some of these first early bits, like the resistance, uh, some health, and then start going upwards, either this route or this route. Um, as you can see, I took both of the middle skills anyway, so... It just depends on what you want. Like, negative 30% shield degradation means your shields are going to last longer. They're not going to just deplete over time as fast. Uh, unless you're taking lots of damage, but that's a, that's a little bit different. Um, so, the reason I went Assassin... Like I said, <clears throat> Assassin is normally the top one that gives you lots of damage. 50% uh, magazine size, that was great. I didn't even think about that, really. Um, let's go to the start, though. <clears throat> so, we got health, we got anomaly power, we got weapon damage. Close range. Um, I just went for that. We already... You know, we're, we're getting healed at close range, so we may as well take weapon damage at close range. Then, the next one is sort of optional. It's up to you guys. So, 15% armor piercing is good. Um, that's just general buff. It would help you in a lot more situations than you realize. Mm, that's pretty cool. There's also 20% re uh, less reload time. So, if you have, say, a shotgun that needs to reload a lot, uh, reloading, spending less time reloading all the time is overall going to let you put more damage out. Um, if they don't have armor, <laughs> uh, you don't need the armor piercing, you're always going to be doing more damage with Bullet Storm. Um, if you do need the armor piercing, I, I don't know. You could always stack armor piercing with some armor piercing later on somewhere. Uh, I believe that it was there. And there. <laughs> so, you can stack it, get 45 or something, and that's pretty good. Now, there's a reason I went reload th time, though. So, we went 8% damage, weapon damage. Now, it's up to you at this point if you want to go... Uh, a long assassin route, or if you want to go down to Harbinger a little bit first. It just depends on where you want to get to first as well. Um, the top route is more damage focused I'd say, and the bottom route is more niche. So the reason I went top, we'll talk about that. So I went 15% uh, skill cooldown for movement, because you guys both know already know I've got all the movement skills, so that's just, I see it as a buff. But we don't have to. Um, if we're not using our movement that often, I, I, that often, and I find that in the game I'm not using it too much, it's probably better just to not have that. Um, and if you want some time to think about it, you can always take the other route, I guess. 20% um, crit damage, deadly shadow, that could be pretty good. Not gonna lie. That could be good. If you guys want to take that, do it. If you're not taking the movement, do it. <laughs> um, yeah. So, self-explanatory enough. Uh, weapon damage close range, we're taking that because it's mandatory. Now, the reason we go down here is we have, when your movement skill ends, increase weapon damage by 50% for 8 seconds. So, uh, key notes here are when the movement skill ends. So, not when it starts, but when it finishes. So, that's not actually too bad because borrowed... No, no. Hunt the Prey... Uh, teleports you behind an enemy. So I would assume that once you use it and you teleport behind an enemy, the skill ends. Which means you get a 50% boost as soon as you're behind them, and you're already getting some shield bonus. Uh, borrowed time, you'd have to mark the location, and then you wouldn't get the uh, bonus until after you've uh, either run out of time or gone back to the location. So that's something important to remember, but if you just use borrowed time, and you don't go, you just, you know, you just mark the location, you're already getting shield. So you could always, if you really want to uh, go borrow time, then hunt, a prey, hunt the prey, and then you're getting the shields, I assume, from borrowed time as well as hunt the prey. So you're a bit more bulky before a, a big fight, right? And then you do your damage, and then 
Actually, that's that's great. Yeah, that's a, that's super great. So you do your damage, and then if you're noticing that the countdown is going down for borrowed time, you do your damage, you take some damage, maybe you go back. You're fine. And the best thing about that is, um, one skill warps you up there, and the other skill warps you back if you remember to click it. Um, so you don't actually have to move at all, and it's just the skills warping you around, which is really cool. Um, and that's something that I would love to do in this game. And of course, you know, once you get up there, if you want to use Venator's Knife, uh, slow them down, you can get some back attacks in, um, you're doing more damage because they're marked, and you're doing double damage, <laughs> uh, for the first bit, for so many seconds, you've got so many seconds to do double damage, so... It's actually a great combo if you want to use all your skills at once and just huge damage, right? Because this is on top of all the other bonuses we already have, like uh, doing increased weapon damage at close range. So I find this class amazing, right? Because I love the maneuverability, I love the big damage. Uh, shotguns always been a thing for me when I'm playing like Borderlands. Uh, shotguns and snipers, so you know, close range snipers could be very fun, especially because that first damage off a sniper is going to be very large as well. And with the re less reload time, <laughs> why not? Why not? So anyway, <laughs> enough of that tangent. That's why, uh, even though it's only for eight seconds, fifty percent's a huge buff. And even though it's very situational, it's only when the movement skills end, and it's only after using them. I don't know if that stacks. I assume it doesn't. So be wary of that. Uh, if it does stack, this will be broken, and they'll probably patch it pretty early on. Um, they'll probably patch this class, if I'm going to be honest, in some way. Uh, they'll probably buff the Pyromancer a little bit. Um, but every all the classes are pretty good, I won't lie. They're all really fairly balanced. Um, it, it's just, if you get a, a class like this that has a really good combo, that could be, you know, maybe a little too overpowered. Um, but maybe it's not. Maybe the other classes have things that I'm missing as well. Because this is just my first look at it all. So I thought I'd explain it. Um, and you can get armor piercing in future if you want. If you get some more points. Uh, but that's really all I'd recommend. I, I don't really want to touch any of this stuff down here with my current build. But yeah, like I said, if you don't want movement skills, you don't need to get this. You can save your point for something else. Get um maybe deception skill, you know. Increases weapon damage by 50%. What if you got a deception skill? What if you got a movement skill? I mean, we do have a deception skill. The knife is technically deception. Um, what if you get both right? And then it increases your attack power by 50% and then another 50% because you use both of them back to back. Um, because this is when you activate a deception skill, this is when your movement skill ends. So uh, you go behind them, walk behind them, then you use your knife or something. Why not? And then the next damage you do after that is doubled. So 50% increase, 15% increase. We already have lots of increases anyway because we're close range and everything else. Do damage. That gets doubled. It's... it's oh, Stackable. It's stackable. Alright. Uh, next, we're going to go armor piercing. We could go skill cooldown for deception, which would help our knife. But I figured because we only got the one skill there, and we, we're not loping all of our skills into the one category. We're not doing... Well, if you were both... If, if you were going hard in Deception, go for these. If not, psh, do what I do, I've done, I guess. But Armor Piercing is just generically pretty good. And um, it doesn't rely on a skill. This is also just helping us do something that might help us. Armor Piercing is always going to help us. It's how I thought of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 20% weapon damage from behind, we get it's mandatory, that's always good. That's another reason why Hunt the Prey is going to be a pretty cool move. Um, I, and the way that I've built this character, by the way, something important to note is I've built it so that it can take one-on-one -on -one situations as well, because I always want to be going for those one-on-one -on -one targets. I don't want to go into a big group and then get plowed down because I'm so squishy. I want to make sure I go, like, back attack, whatever it was called, uh, Hunt the Prey. Get behind one enemy, murder them, get some shields and health, uh, maybe shoot some things from there or walk back to where I was, uh, keep going in my plate. I'm going to leave hitting like AOE attacks and hitting lots of enemies to the pyros, 
Pyro is really good at that. Devastate is uh, okay at that as well. Uh, Technomancers can have some tricks for him. But Trickster overall maybe isn't the best one for handling lots of... It's probably not the best one for handling lots of groups now that I think about it. But you can slow them all down. That's pretty useful. Alright. Uh, where were we? Here. So we got weapon damage because... Well, you, you, you guys can take whichever one you want. Uh, there's 15% weapon damage close range if you're using shotguns, if you're doing the normal assassin tactic, uh, and trickster tactic, take it. Most people will want to take this and they will take it because it'll be like 15% bigger than 8, so that's fair enough. The reason I chose 8 is I just want to be a little more well-rounded. 8 applies to all forms of damage, not just close range, so if I wanted to take a sniper rifle and do some shots, I'm at least doing something that's fairly decent compared to something that's not as, not very decent. Um, but, you know, if if I get more points in time, that's definitely something I might consider picking up. I might also p consider picking up the Shotgun Master, which I didn't talk about. So, the reason I didn't pick it up is the 12% drop rate for the Shotgun is good, It is, and that's a good buff early game. Um, but also, if... I, my brain was like, okay, so if I had to choose, why would I get this one when I could just get this one? This one only applies for shotguns, this one applies to every weapon at close range. It's both 15% increase as well. And this one's mandatory, if you don't get the 8% weapon damage, then you need to get this, right, to continue on your little pathway. With this one, it's optional, you don't have to get it, you can save a point, you can invest it somewhere else, so... That's really what I thought. Um, so, for example, getting this one, when the movement skill ends, increasing weapon damage by 50%, I was like, that's, you know, something like that, I appreciate more than the 15% weapon damage from the shotgun. Um, and that, that's preference, you guys can switch it, but that's how I went. Um, so, yeah, weapon damage, weapon damage, you're getting lots of weapon damage anyway. Then up here, I chose 15% skill cooldown for movement. So, again, another uh, buff for our movement, so... That, like I said, that was originally 11 or something, now it's 7.7. .7, which just means we can hunt prey faster, we can get our shields up faster, because the way I thought about it was the more we can use our movement skills, the more shields we can generate as well. And the more we can just, like, move around the map. Because if you think about it, 5 seconds isn't very long. Add in, like, the time that it takes to reload and we're basically good, right? Because in those 7 seconds, I can be thinking about my next movement, I can be running around, I can be thinking, I can be shooting, I can be reloading, um, I can be talking to the team, I'm probably going to do that while I'm doing it all, but it'll it'll come down before you know it. 11 seconds is a little long, 7.7 7 seconds I'm very happy with. That even might get reduced up to 9 or something, and, uh, but uh, not reduced, and whatever the reduced, the opposite is. <laughs> Prolonged up to 9 in time with patches or something. Borrowed time, I don't know how long the cooldown on that is yet, so we'll find out. Maybe they're not entirely sure what they want to do with it yet either. Um, so next one, 20% weapon damage from behind. So you might have noticed it's just like, <sighs> what, movement, right? But you could have just went, if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, you can go weapon damage, armor piercing, weapon damage, 20% crit damage, weapon damage close range, armor piercing, weapon damage from behind, either one of these or both of these damages. More weapon damage, more weapon damage from behind. <laughs> that's what I mean by the top tree is just very damage orientated, and that's also why it's great. I love it. And if you think about the fact that these 8% stack, the from behinds can stack, armor piercing and close range can all stack. Right? Like, you can do all of those things in the same movement. You just shoot someone from behind with a shotgun and you get all those bonuses. Um, and I, I love that. Um, <laughs> if we remove some of the shotgun... Actually, there's no... Sh and, and there's no shotgun mandatory uh, weapon damage either. So, if I want to do all this... Oh, okay, we got this one. We got this one. Um, but if we want to do this all with a sniper, <laughs> the damage isn't very different. We're just missing this 12%, which um, you can change to assault rifle, but I hadn't got up to this point yet to explain it. But that's that's what you could do, right? If you'd rather go assault rifle rather than shotgun, if you'd rather go, say, twisted rounds over the knife or something like that, then you may as well go assault. 
because, I, like I just said, there's been no shotgun changes. Um, the only restriction really is close range. So as long as you're doing close range damage with an assault rifle, you are free to do this. I just know I personally am going to go shotgun. But let me know if you guys have gone assault with this class. I'd love to hear it. Um, you can always get armor piercing here too. But anyway, there's weapon damage against elites. Now the reason I didn't pick this in the big weapon damage chain is I don't care about doing like increased damage against specific enemies because that's very situational. Some people will fall for the trap and be like, oh, I don't like elites, I'd love to do more damage. That's fine, that's fine. But I'm not going to do that because I want just overall more consistency. And I know that the point I don't use here, I can use on something else like this movement, right? Or uh, on this extra 50%. Or you can always just use it on the other one, right? So you can get like close range as well as weapon damage. Great. Um, and you can see that I made this chain, and I still had all these points, so that's why I also spent down here a little bit. Um, now, something else I can talk about is getting weapon leech up here, this 5%. Pretty okay. I, I wouldn't turn that down because we are doing big burst damage. 5% weapon leech is pretty decent because you'd assume that us being one of the most DPS focused classes, especially with this uh, big tree, is I think even a 5% is going to be something, especially as we already get... 20% from getting kills near us, which maybe that'll be reduced in the future to like 12 or something. I don't know. Uh, depends on how hard they want to make the game, I guess, or if they want to nerf it. But I like the character, I really want to try it out. So, uh, we have 50% magazine size, kind of speaks for itself, you have to get it, and the more bullets we have for like a shotgun means we have to reload those often, so that's already great. Same thing for a sniper rifle. Same thing <laughs> for an assault rifle. If you, assault rifles already have a fair amount of bullets, getting twice that amount is very productive. So I don't think there's ever going to really be too much of a situation where that's bad, unless you're using like a dinky pistol or something, and you never find you have to reload anyway. I don't know. So, I already talked about this. Shotgun or assault rifle, whatever your choice. I like shotgun. You don't get a choice here, so... I mean, like, you have to choose one of them. If you want to go to this last path, which is cold calculation. For each enemy in close range, your weapon damage is increased by 8%. So... The way my brain thought about it was, okay, so say I'm not really using this skill much. It's basically just like this, right? 8% weapon damage. It's close range. But it's basically just like, I'm mainly going to be attacking at close range, it's just like another 8%, so I may as well get this. You don't have to, you can unclick it, and you know, you can get the 15% weapon damage if you wanted to. Like, uh, you, you, and if you don't like shotguns and assault rifles, you don't even have to go further down this pathway if you don't want to at this time. Um, I don't know what's going to unlock later, and you might want to continue going that way. But that's just how I built this. So I, I figured, well, 8%, even if I'm just around one enemy, that's that's good enough for me. Um, but if there is, say, two enemies around, then it's going up to 16%. Now, I'm not trying to get really close to lots of enemies, because like I said, I'm using this class more as a, a, a tackle one-on-one -on -one sort of enemy thing. You know, back attack, one enemy. Right? Hunt them down. I'm not going to hunt down an entire pack <laughs> and slay an entire pack at once. They're just going to trample over me. Um, unless I'm behind the Devastator, I guess, which, that's, that's good teamwork, you should do that. But that's, that's the, that's the sort of reasoning I had there. So, I'm actually happy enough to not even invest points in this. The only reason I do is in case this opens up further and I want to continue down this path, because Assassin seems pretty good. Um, but who knows, maybe they'll even make connections around here or something. Um, and then that'll change what I have to think about, and maybe I'll have to get increased damage against elites. So, the bit that you guys may have been thinking about, or wondering about, why did I invest my points instead of on, say, more weapon damage, or weapon leech, and stuff, why did I go down this route? Even though it's near the start, and it's not going to go towards the end. So, this, a lot of tankiness, a lot of healing, this, toxic. Toxic damage, skill damage. I went this way because it has weapon damage close range. 
More damage. Sounds great. 15%? It's pretty good. Next thing. <sighs> Activating a movement skill increases armor piercing for by 15% for 10 seconds. You guys already know I'm using movement skills often. I've got both of them. I'm using this, I'm getting an extra 15%. That's fine for me, and it's for 10 seconds, which is an okay amount of time. Um, so, that's fine. Then we have Cycle of Life and Death. This one's optional. You guys don't have to choose this. So, increase 10% health for each enemy that died in close range. Now, the real... The real thing comes down to, so uh, what this is, is our normal ability heals us 20% health uh, every time we're near an enemy and we get a kill. That's good. This is either an additional 10% on that, so it's 30% total, or it's its own separate 10%. I'm not sure if they're split or if it's calculated together as 30. It might just be 20 and 10 rather than 30. Okay? Right. So, I wanted the extra healing, and you guys can run some calcs with me potentially on this, but leech. 5% weapon leech means you're getting 5% back of whatever damage you did to the opponent. I don't know how high the damage scales in this game. If our weapon's doing enough damage to overheal 10% of our health, you should get weapon leech. If Weapon Leech doesn't heal very much, and it's just a little bit, because this is the only Weapon Leech I think will have up to this point, you may as well get 10% health, right? For killing enemies close range. Now, this is Weapon Leech everywhere, so if you're using this character not at close range, Weapon Leech is probably beneficial. Um, if you are using it at close range, Cycle of Life and Death could be nice. Extra 10%. And if you really want, if you go down the same path, there's another cycle of life and death just here. So you can stack those two and either have 20%, 20% or just a big stack of 40% extra health when near an enemy that goes down. And I think that also sounds superb. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't want that. Unless you don't actually want either of these two things and you want more armor piercing, crit damage, shotgun damage, and you just want to do more damage. I decided personally, I want a little bit of healing. I don't want too much damage, and I thought, if I'm getting about 30% of my health after standing next to a deceased enemy, and of course I'm getting 12% shields, or plus, probably 12%, 30% on a heal, a kill is probably what I'm expecting is going to be good. If I get too far into the game and it gets very difficult, and the battles are taking a while, I'm not getting much health back. Uh, but equally, if it's if I'm struggling to kill things, they're going to be killing me more often. Which means even if I'm doing more damage, I'm not going to be able to sustain myself and I'm dying more often than I want to. So it's just finding that nice little balance for me where I'm like, okay, I'm doing lots of damage. But I'm surviving a lot better than if I was playing Dark Souls. <laughs> Dark Souls is fun and enjoyable and I do enjoy it. But also... It's good to have a bit of sustain in between the fights, so we can go from one enemy to the next to the next. Because even if you go and kill one enemy, it doesn't matter if the rest of the room wipes you out. Because we do have cooldowns. So we have to be able to sustain until our cooldowns come back up. Now, the other other reason. We get 10% health. Uh, that's not optional, that's just 10% health. The big reason we came down this way is for this against the odds. <clears throat> now, this is a bit experimental on my part. I don't know the repercussions of it. But, I like it because it says, when surrounded by enemies, reloading your weapon, which we're going to be doing often, plus we have this negative 20% reload time, right? So we're reloading more often. Uh, we're reloading faster. And if we're using a shotgun or a sniper, we're, we don't have that many bullets. <clears throat> So reloading deals damage and interrupts uh, enemies' abilities. Now, that damage scales with anom anomaly power, which is this whole route down here, so it's not entirely great, it's not going to be a lot of damage. But what I'm more interested in is that we can even get a little bit of damage by reloading, which is an 
something you feel like you're not going to do that often. Uh, sorry, you, you're going to be doing it anyway. So why not spend that time that's going to be wasted doing something a little significant? But more important is it interrupts their abilities. So down here, Temporal Blade interrupts targets. Cyclone Slice interrupts targets. We don't have either of those things. And those are the only things that interrupt. If we can have this ability that lets us reload and interrupt, then we can even potentially use our, like, our reload... <laughs> Why am I doing the quotation? We can use our reload as an interruption tool. So we can potentially see when they're going to use a skill and then just reload to stop it. So it's like a big cancel. Um, and by the time we're done reloading, we can start shooting again. I love that. That idea. And it doesn't seem like there's a limit. So we could always just shoot and reload. And I think the idea is, well, you're not going to be doing much damage anyway, so why would you keep reloading? Because we can stop their skills. Um, say you had a shotgun with one bullet in the chamber. You shoot, you reload, you shoot, you reload. <laughs> you're going to be stopping skills half the time. But that's not the point. I don't know if it happens at the start of the reload, if it lasts for the entire reload. But I do like the idea that we can interrupt enemies with a reload. <laughs> and it's just... It's like a... What's it called? Inputs per second or something like. We're just... We're getting more inputs. We're getting more stuff done, done in a shorter amount of time. And we don't have to use an ability for it. So I feel like this is very cool. If... Now, this is going to annoy me. If at some point in the game, they're, they're like, oh, we'll have to nerf some things, and I can't reset my points, and I can't be like, okay, well, this doesn't work anymore. I don't want to go down this route. I'll be a little upset, because I don't care that much about, like, these abilities along the way. <laughs> um, I mainly went down here for Against the Odds, because I spotted it, and was like, that's actually pretty cool, and what's it doing so close to the starting line? Um, something else to note, if you don't want these abilities over here... You can just go 1, 2, 3, 4, um, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, so there you could get resistance, health, and less damage from elites. Actually, no, it's even less. It's uh, 1, 2, 3. So you can take, get, you can get more one more point if you don't want these things, and if you'd rather the health and resistance, and uh, additional, well, you're getting health anyway, but it can make you bulkier. So if you feel like you're dying a lot, if you need that extra health, you can go for this. Um, and that means you could, if you wanted to as well, you could skip this route, like I said earlier. Uh, go more bulky and then go up at either intersection. Um, I recommend generally... Well, this one, if you're going movement skills, I guess. If you're not going movement skills, if you're not fighting at close range, it's not worth going up this way. Um, actually, this one's awesome, movement skills. Okay, uh, I take back what I said. Only go down here if you're using movement skills. Apparently. If you've got at least one movement skill. Then at least you can make this a little worthwhile. But It doesn't... It You know it t Screw it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if you want this cycle of life and death, and this cycle of life and death, you, you need to get it. Yeah. Alright, so... If... Basically, this class works really well with shotguns, huge damage, back attacks, uh, could work with, well with sniper rifles, can work well with assault rifles, uh, it can be a little tactical, uh, movement is generally a priority, if you're going toxic, go the bottom route, uh, Harbinger is pretty defensive, but if you ever want more attack, just go upwards here first and then go down, especially if you're going movement. If you're not going movement and you want to just build in here, that's fine too. Um, you know, maybe you want to go downwards. I guess. <laughs> but I do like against the odds and I feel like that was something they planned on putting in the Harbinger Reaver route. But having access to it from the Assassin route is good. Although it is spreading my resources a little bit thin. And yeah, that's that's it. I think that's all that I really wanted to say for the, the vid, guys. Cool. Great. 
Uh, hope you enjoyed the, the big breakdown of everything and how it works. And I hope it was helpful. Uh, like I said, bottom one down here, Tempest, probably fun. Devastator, you can go pretty much anywhere and it'd be fun. Build it how you like. Technomaster, go this route. Uh, go Pestilence first and then switch at the last second to Tech uh, Shaman on the second intervene part there. If you want to build it the same way that I did. If you want some damage and some support. If you want to go full turret mode, go the top route. And Trickster, the top route is always DPS focused. It's always good. Uh, go against the odds if you want. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. Alright. And with that guys, uh, thank you so much. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Uh, I'm probably happy to add anyone to this game when I get the game. I just downloaded the demo, so there's probably going to be maybe some action of that coming out soon. And, um, good luck, have fun! Yeah! Let's keep on playing multiplayer games and keep on going co-op. Alright. What? Oh, I don't even have a webcam that comes up. Okay, ignore that, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys. Support each other and take care.